Although we've told the agriculture story of Benue State, it is important to know that there are other yam producing states in Nigeria. They include Sokoto, Abia, Anambra, Delta, Enugu, Eboy, Niger, Taraba, and a whole lot more. So everybody is actually working on producing more food in Nigeria. Meanwhile, the efforts to increase food production has also been the burden of the federal government and policies have been implemented. Dry season farming is one of the current approaches where the government implements through the Growth Enhancement Scheme, GES, and this has the endorsement of some agri-extensionists who say that the crops planted during the dry season, that is between November and March, are usually vegetables and maize, and they mostly are fresh and healthy. The Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Development has explained that the focus for 2016-2017 dry season will be on four major crops, rice, wheat, maize and granite, with their input packages which will be available at redemption centers to ensure maximum output, while a total of over 1.5 million farmers are targeted to be supported under value chain crops in the 2016-2017 dry season. There's also been the Central Bank of Nigeria Anchor Borrowers Program, which was launched in November 2015. The objective is to create a linkage between anchor companies involved in the processing and smallholder farmers of the required key agricultural commodities. The loan targets smallholder farmers engaged in the production of identified commodities across the country. The farmers should be in groups or cooperatives of between 5 and 20 for ease of administration. The CBN is also considering commodities of comparative advantage to the state and considers cereals, cotton, roots and tubers, sugar cane, tree crops, legumes, tomato, livestock, and other commodity that will be introduced by the CBN from time to time. In the case of Cross River State, the program is tagged Rice Anchor Burrows Program and has been allocated 3 billion naira with 18,000 square kilometers to be used by 78,000 farmers to produce 5 metric tons of rice per hectare. I'd like to assure the entire country that Cross River State will aggressively pursue this Rice Anchor Burrows Program. That by the close of one year, Cross River State will be competing neck to neck with Cape. What we have done is to is to restrict um, foreign exchange allocation to those who want to import rice. And as a result of that restriction, it has given a lot of encouragement to our farmers. Not just through the Ancobora program. There are people who were doing who were into rice farming before the importation was, was I mean flooded our country. Now everybody's jumping into the into, into the game and they are beginning to see that now they can also be wealthy being rice farmers. And that is the message we are trying to pass out. Outside Nigeria, international bodies are contributing. The International Fund for Agricultural Development, IFAD, is one of such. Its latest plan in Nigeria is the Value Chain Development Program. This program takes a holistic and demand-driven approach to addressing constraints along the cassava and rice value chains. It also threw an inclusive strategy, threatening the capacity of actors along the chain, including producers and processors, as well as public and private institutions, service providers, policy makers and regulators. The objective is to sustainably enhance rural income and food security. The target groups include 15,000 smallholder farming households, 1,680 processors and 800 traders. The IFAD program said I should go for the training in Ilori, that is Enkan, in Kwara State. So I went for the training. We undergo the, the, the training of power tiller, how to thresh rice, operation of cassava, and all the missionaries in the Enkan Center. They went around with us, trained us and everything. So when we came back, so my SPCD, IFAD program coordinator, said, okay, he is bringing a treasure. He now brought a treasure for me that I should be using it to get my daily bread. So for now, I've employed four guys, that I am, four boys that I'm training them right now on the feed. But even here, the farmers need more help. Uh, our challenge now is harvest. We are having serious challenge of uh, harvest because uh, 
our our farmers in the state have seriously key into the program and the production is very massive and very impressive and uh, what we have what we have now as a challenge is harvest and it's in cases like this that the state governments are called upon so what government is doing uh, is to acquire tractors and give it out to farmers who are interested uh, at a subsidy rate. Government takes part of the responsibility and uh, currently we have approved over 70 of the tractors and we are working with other partners who are interested in working with us to ensure that we provide this because honestly for commercial agriculture equipment must come in and the farmers may not have the capacity the government has. We can guarantee loans for them but now as I talk to you the windows that are created by Central Bank, Bank of Agriculture, Bank of Industry and then Benue State Government support to those who are interested in going into farming. In spite of what many describe as a few itches in the implementation of the various policies aimed at increasing food production in Nigeria, it does seem that farming is catching on. However, there's still the challenge of storage and processing of the crops. According to the Federal Ministry of Agriculture, Nigeria ranked 16th on the global tomato production scale, accounting for over 10% of Africa's and 1.2% of total world production of tomatoes. <laughs> However, an alarming 50% of tomatoes harvested in the country is lost because of poor food chain management. This is despite the fact that the country has not been able to meet domestic demand for tomatoes. Loss and waste is also recorded in the value chain of processing rice and this is a chain which the federal government is interested in dealing with. These machines are going to be built here. The reapers we bring in from India and then reproduce them here. They're like lawn mowers. They cut the rice and then leave on the floor and you pick and thresh. Makes it so much easier because the stress on the local farmer is not small. The, the stress on women especially who have to beat the rice on the floor and and try and winnow and put in sacks is absolutely slave labor. We don't want that to continue. The Bank of Agriculture believes in this approach and asks that mechanized farming be made accessible to many more farmers. So that we are now able to use technology to connect the producers as well as the processors the marketers. Now, as well as, if you like, the input suppliers, like we have under the Anko Barrow program, we are able now to get the input suppliers like Fatal Chemical, as well as extension services to work together with the millers as well as the farmers. Now, this is the kind of, uh, uh, if you like, ecosystem that we are trying to create between not only small uh, scale producers and processors, but also along with, if you like, vertically. I mean, not only horizontally, but also vertically. We want to make sure that large-scale producers, large-scale input suppliers are also working together with small-scale producers, small-scale processors, small-scale uh, marketers, not only domestic marketers, but also who would like to export out of the country. The tempo of dealing with food insecurity seems high and hopefully this would bring back the glorious agricultural days in Nigeria. Well, that's it on this episode of Big Story. I'm Amy Thompson. <music>